I'm taking on one of the most complicated and controversial aspects of Disney World today. This is a Magic Kingdom Genie Plus Challenge. What's the secret to using Genie Plus in Disney World? No, I'm gonna tell you. I'm here in Magic Kingdom today to put Genie Plus to the test. There are 24 lightning lanes here, and I'm gonna try to get through them all. Is that even possible? I'm not sure. There have been a lot of changes to Genie Plus. Modification has been made easier and somewhat harder. I'll explain. There's also more lightning lanes. It, there's a lot of room for error here. So I'm putting it to the test. I'm gonna see how many lightning lanes I can get through today. And along the way, I'm gonna show you all of the tips, tricks, and the big secret to using Genie Plus in Magic Kingdom. Let's go. Genie Plus is Disney's paid skip the line offering. It is controversial because it is paid and replaced the free fast pass, but it's how you're gonna skip the regular standby line in Disney World. And that's right, pals. I'm trying to skip all 24 lines in Magic Kingdom. Kingdom today. That is a lot of big Magic Kingdom rides. We're talking Tron Light Cycle Run, Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, Peter Pan's Flight, and a whole lot more. All of them. We're going to try to skip all those lines. Can I do it? I don't know. Let's find out. With Genie Plus, you pay a date-based fee. Uh, varies based on the crowd level. Today it was $22 per person to skip a variety of lines around Disney World. Not all of them. Some rides aren't included. You can book one lightning lane at a ride at a time, barring some exceptions that we'll talk about. And that's how you're going to skip the lines. It is uh, typically a very valuable tool, especially in Magic Kingdom where there's a lot of rides to get through. Now, according to the Disney website, you can expect to skip two to three lines when you purchase Genie Plus in a day. That doesn't sound very exciting to me. So we're going to try to skip 24. Uh, I think we can do it. So, uh, you know, you just have to have a little strategy, little tips, little tricks. And I'm going to talk about all those tips and tricks along the way today. You got to go back in time to this morning. Flashback time. Super long wait of security this morning at the Transportation Ticket Center. Um, I am going to take the monorail just because I got my first lightning lane. It's coming up now because uh, I had to wait like 20 minutes at security. There's just a hold up. It's not usually that long. Uh, but that kind of thing can happen. We're still rushing to make that first lightning lane. Starts at 9.20. So, uh, a jungle cruise. Let's so start the day with some jungle cruise. <laughs> if you're coming into Magic Kingdom via the transportation and the ticket center, more often than not, uh, your option will be a monorail and a ferry boat. I find the ferry boat to be a lot more pleasant, but the monorail is undeniably faster. So if you're in a rush, come snag that monorail. All right, I made it in the park. So we are moving and grouping over towards Jungle Cruise because as soon as we scan into our first lighting lane, we get to use our first lighting lane. Because as soon as we use our first lighting lane, we get to book another, which is obviously very important today as we try to skip all 24 skippable lines in Magic Kingdom. Now, even though I did just get to the park, I already have three lightning lanes. How is that possible? Well, I'll explain. So when you are booking your Genie Plus lightning lanes, you can book your first lightning lane starting at 7 a.m. This is true for all guests who have purchased Genie Plus. I recommend purchasing Genie Plus prior to 7 a.m., whether that's getting up at 6.30 and doing it or purchasing it after midnight the night before. That way, you're all set to get the best lightning lane you can at 7 a.m. In this park, the lightning lane that goes the quickest tends to be Jungle Cruise. So if you're wanting to skip the line at Jungle Cruise, then that's the one you're gonna wanna prioritize at seven. Another good option would be Peter Pan's Flight. That's the other one that goes really quickly. Now with Genie Plus, you can only book one lightning lane at a time unless you wait through a two hour cool down. However, Genie Plus isn't the only way to skip the lines. You can also skip the lines using the individual lightning lane. Uh, this is a separately purchased skip the line offering. They have them offered for higher demand attractions and each attraction is priced separately. Here in Magic Kingdom, there are two of them. It is Tron Light Cycle Run and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Today, Tron Light Cycle Run ran me $20, while Seven Dwarfs Mine Train ran me 11, but those prices are date-based, so they can vary. You can book up to two individual lightning lanes a day, and that includes in the other parks. So if you use both in Magic Kingdom, you won't be able to hop and book others in another park, but you could book one here and one in Epcot or whatever you wanted to do. Now, resort guests can start booking those individual lightning lanes at 7 a.m. when the Genie Plus options become available too. But for those that do not have a Disney Resort reservation, you can start booking at the park open, those individual lightning lanes. So for me, that was 9 a.m. I was still in line at security, but I hopped on and went ahead and grabbed Seven Doors Mine Train and Tron Light Cycle Run. One thing that I will know is on some days, on busier days, you might have to worry about these selling out. Typically, the less expensive options are going to sell out first. So even though Tron is a newer ride, Seven Doors Mine Train was more sold out than Tron this morning. So 
If you want an individual lighting lane, go ahead and grab it as soon as you can, just to make sure that you get it. The other great thing about individual lightning lanes, opposed to Genie Plus lightning lane reservations, is you get to pick what time of day you want to go instead of having to choose the next available time, which is how Genie Plus works. I'm out of breath. I'm getting a stitch in my side. Things are dramatic. All right, we've made it to Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise is a boat attraction where you ride along as a skipper guides you through the rivers of the world. There's animatronic animals and cool theming. And the best part is that the skippers tell jokes along the way. Very punny, funny jokes. Uh, so if you like jokes and boats, this is the ride for you. Also very classic Disney attraction, very popular. And tends to have pretty long waits. Uh, I don't see any one canoe. Just kidding, those are kayaks. Don't think you something scared them off though, so game plan. If y'all see anything scary, please let me know. I get very scared very easily. So that's Skipper Felix. He just started here. I haven't heard from him in hours. <laughs> then we forgot the first roll the jumbo. You cannot run a rhino. Yay! But it does look like he will get the point. While I was waiting the four minutes it took to get through the lightning lane and get on the Jungle Cruise, I went ahead and booked a new lightning lane because you can book a new one when? Yeah. When you scan into your first one. Some rides have one scanning point, some rides have two. If a ride does have two, you will have to scan into both before you can book a new one, but I would check after you scan in the first one if you're in a little bit of a line, just because the earlier you book, the better your times are gonna be. I went ahead and booked our next one for Peter Pan's flight because this attraction is getting the later times in the day compared to everything else. And I wanna make sure we don't miss it later. So Peter Pan's flight it was. Now, important thing here, you're gonna notice something that we're gonna use a lot today where I am modifying that lightning lane time. So. I booked Peter Pan's flight. I got it for a little later in the afternoon. I didn't love that. So I went to the booked lightning lane I had. I hit modify this time. What this does is that you can look for better times on that attraction that are sooner. You can also look for other attractions with different times. You can modify to anything. The reason this modification feature is so important and you don't want to just cancel and rebook is because if you are going to start that two hour cooldown, this isn't going to restart it if you change your lightning lane. So I went in immediately got lucky and saw that there was noon, which was two hours earlier. And another thing is that sometimes when you click on your time, a different time will generate. So make sure before you confirm that you're getting a time you want. Sometimes it'll generate a lot later. But you'll see here, it worked to my favor and I clicked on noon and it gave me 11.45. So we got that Peter Pan flight one a lot earlier. I'm gonna keep trying to get a little earlier, but uh, I'm gonna go get a locker for my rain gear. Gonna get a water bottle probably. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that two hour cool down. It is a hot and sunny day. Um, but at any point, hot and sunny could mean hot and rainy. So I did bring my rain jacket, but I don't have a big enough bag to carry it around comfortably. I don't want to tie it around my waist and get all sweaty. So I'm doing something I don't actually typically do and getting a locker uh, for both my rain jacket and my extra power bank. That way, if it looks like it's gonna rain, I can pop up to the front of the park and get my stuff, but I don't have to carry it around with me all day. If it doesn't rain, if I don't need it, I can just grab it on the way out tonight. So I don't often use lockers, but lockers are super convenient. And uh, I do recommend trying to keep everything on you if you can, so you don't have to crisscross the park and such, but sometimes lockers can be awesome. One thing we also use lockers for that might be a value to you if you're splitting up your party during your trip is we will often hand off stuff by sharing a locker. So if I need to get Brie Love a camera, I'll get a locker in the morning, pop the camera in there, send Brie Love the locker number and the code, and then he can go get that camera later in the day. That's something we do a lot. You could do that with anything. If you've got people heading to the park first, you need to hand something off. Drop them off in the lockers at the front of the park. A Magic Kingdom locker rental is actually before you go into the train station. So if you just come out from the park and turn left or come in and go right, you'll find these lockers over here by the ECV rental. Um, and it's really easy. So you just have these little kiosks and tap them. I want a standard locker. I don't have a coupon and then you pay. Once you pay, you get a little slip. It tells you your locker number as well as um, it's your receipt. And then you find your locker, which I'm doing a bad job of. Looking for three, two, 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 two. And uh, you program the code, so it doesn't give you a code. Remember, here it is. It pro you program your own code. So I did that already, so I'm gonna go ahead and open my locker. You can go in and out of your locker as many times as you want during the day. And when you're done with your locker, you can just hit this red end rental button so that they can rent it to somebody else. But you're welcome to use it the whole day too. I uh, don't leave anything in there though, because it will likely go to lost and found. One time, true story, Breedlove left his laptop in here. 
That's what happens when your job is Disney World. All right, let's talk to our cool downs. So if you book a lightning lane that is more than two hours out from the current time, so say it's 9 a.m. and you book a 1 p.m. lightning lane, you do not have to wait until you use that lightning lane to book another. There is a two hour cool down. So if you wait two hours after 9 a.m., which would be 11, you could book a new lightning lane and still keep that original lightning lane. This is a really great tool for those more popular attractions. If you're not fast enough at 7 a.m., Jungle Cruise could be more than two hours out. Happens a lot in Hollywood Studios. And waiting the two hour cooldown can seem like a bit of a hassle. And for me today, it will be because I'm trying to get all the lightning lanes. But it usually means you can do other rides that you maybe don't need lightning lane for, see shows, grab lunch. And I am gonna use that time today to like grab lunch and do some things, so at least it's not too bad. I actually personally like to engage the two hour cooldown because it means that I'm skipping the longest lines instead of just the most convenient. You can see that sort of strategy in one of our perfect days or best day evers or secrets to Magic Kingdom videos. We typically use a more relaxed Genie Plus strategy where we only use it for the biggest rides and that is my favorite way to use Genie Plus. It's the way I recommend using it. But we're really pushing the system to its limits today. We're gonna see if we can get through everything on Genie Plus. So my first two hour cooldown activity was to get a locker. My second two hour cooldown activity was to buy a water bottle because I did lose my water bottle. I don't want to talk about it. I'm really upset. Um, I'm probably going to order the same one from Amazon because I love it. Um, and like this one is good. It's got flour on it, which is cute. I got it in a Oh my God, did you just see me walk into a pole? It's got flour on it, which is cute. I got it in a Oh my God. This one's cute. It's got flour on it from Baby. It does have a straw in there, which is a must for me with water bottles. Always check for water bottles with straw. And it was $29.99, which was cheaper than I expected for a water bottle this big. Um, and uh, right now there's an annual pass discount, which is pretty nice. So I got this water bottle. I'm gonna carry it around. I'm gonna stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. In fact, if you're not drinking water, go get some water. Pause the video right now and go get water. The mouthpiece, it's nice. It works. It doesn't, it doesn't drink as easy. But look at this. I need like a plate. I can't do trash can. The mouthpiece stays exposed, like the part that you put your mouth on. And Disney World's, you know, gross, so I don't love that. Um, it's as clean as it can be, but a lot of germs. So my water bottle that I typically use, which you can find in my essentials at at all ear style on Instagram, that one has a cover for the top of the water bottle. Also easier to drink, so it has a soft mouthpiece. There's a lot I like better about it. Can't wait to, to get my water bottle back. Okay, I'll stop now, otherwise we're gonna have to rename this video. Quincy talks about her water bottle for 12 hours in Magic Kingdom. <laughs> so I'm gonna start trying to modify this Peter Pan Lightning Lane. I've done my activities that I wanted to do, so I'm gonna start trying to get it a little earlier if I can. I'm kind of nervous that I, I made the wrong call by doing the two hour cooldown so early. I don't think I did. I think I'm gonna be able to do the easier rides later and that now was the time to have the bigger weights. But we'll see for sure. No dice on modifying for earlier for Peter Pan's flight, but we are just uh, 20 minutes out now. And pro tip, you can scan in five minutes early. So we are only 15 minutes out. So I'm stopping by Pinocchio Village House to grab a coffee. They do actually have Joffrey's cold brew shake in Jamaican here on mobile order. So I went to Starbucks and the line looked scary. So instead I came back here. Now we're near Peter Pan's flight and we're not gonna have to wait in line. Got my coffee with caramel, got my air conditioning. Now we wait, and soon we Peter Pan. All right, it's 1137. Uh, our lightning lane is scheduled at 11.45, which means we'll be able to scan in at 11.40. There's typically a little bit of a line to the first scanner at Peter Pan's flight, which I am actually gonna go get in because I wanna be able to book my next lightning lane as soon as possible. So hopefully this line will take three minutes. Haunted Mansion is looking scary to me. <laughs> uh, because it's down at like past 6 p.m. now, which is a stressful, distance away, but I don't know if I'm gonna go for it. We'll see. I don't know if I wanna start my next two hour cooldown or maybe grab one and then start the two hour cooldown. I think that's probably what I'll do. Very shocking development here is that Peter Pan's flight is down. I'm gonna wait a couple of minutes because I have to, to be able to get uh, another lightning lane still. Um, hopefully what will happen is that right on time when my lightning lane starts and Peter Pan is down, it will populate my app with an ex multi-experience path. 
Basically, when an attraction is down at any point during your lightning lane window, if you have not used your lightning lane, you will get a multi-experience pass. It will automatically populate in your My Disney Experience app, and this allows you to ride almost anything, uh, excluding the roller coasters. If that happens to you with a roller coaster, you'll be able to ride that roller coaster for sure. So I now just have to see if that multi-experience pass populates. That actually gives us a little flexibility in our day, so it seems like a bad thing. It is stressing me out a little, but it gives me the flexibility that I I could use that multi-experience pass on Peter Pan or I could not worry about another two hour cooldown and use it on Haunted Mansion if I can get Peter Pan's flight again. For now though I can't book another lightning lane until either that lightning lane is used or 11.49 because that will be after a two hour cooldown. So luckily even if that multi-experience pass has a little bit of a delay I'll be able to book a new one just a couple of minutes after so I'm gonna just stand here and stare at my phone until that happens. Okay, so my experience redemption hasn't populated yet. I still have the Peter Pan Lightning Lane, but my two hour cooldown passed, thank goodness. So I went ahead and booked It's a Small World because I'm right next to it. And that way I can just knock that one out. I need to start another two hour cooldown because I definitely am gonna have to use one for Haunted Mansion. It's already past 7 p.m. tonight and it's not even noon yet. So I'm definitely gonna have to use one for Haunted Mansion. I'm just hesitant to book another two hour cooldown. And I would love to try to do it when I can do my Tron Lightning Lane during the two hour cooldown. So I'm trying, I'm pushing it, I'm gambling. I'm a gambler now. Oh man, I drank my coffee really fast for no reason. Lots happening. All right, we are skipping 30 minutes on It's a Small World. As I know it feels like we're slow going on attractions, but this is all part of the strategy. Scan through both terminals, which means I can book another. Went ahead and booked that Haunted Mansion, but I'm going to try to modify to one of the four that are stressing me out. Haunted Mansion, Meet Ariel, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and Space Mountain. Those are the ones that are getting further out and are probably gonna be our most likely two hour cooldown ones. I'm gonna try to modify any of those. If I see a time that is before 1 p.m., I'm gonna try to modify. If not, we'll do the two hour cooldown now and just move on with our lives and suffer for it. It'll be fine. We'll eat, we'll have a snack. It's a Small World is certainly a must do. It is a slow moving boat ride attraction where you travel around the world and uh, little kids from different cultures sing the It's a Small World song, which is a total earworm. I don't typically think you need a lighting lane for this one. I'd recommend riding this one later at night because the line drops significantly. Off It's a Small World, it was lovely. Um, I'm not having a ton of luck with the modification. That's the thing to know is that the modification process is different. So if you've been at Disney World in the last year or you've watched a lot of our videos, uh, more recently there was an update where now you can modify your lightning lanes on a convenient modification screen. And if you modify a lightning lane, it does not start your two hour cooldown over, which is really, really awesome. However, it's actually working against me today and I'll tell you how. Basically what happens with the new modification process is that it's easier for everyone to modify. So before you used to have to cancel your lightning lane to be able to book a new one. And that's risky because it starts your two hour cooldown over. If you don't get the lightning lane you want, things got dicey. It was a little bit like gambling. Whereas now you can kind of safely modify whenever, which means everybody is modifying, which is great. I am actually glad that it's more accessible to people and we don't have to do all the explaining. But for stuff like this, where you're trying to get you know a lot of lightning lanes there's no longer a leg up over folks that don't know the more complicated modifying process so uh that's kind of my my beef with it is that it just makes it a little harder overall a good thing overall will make it easier on you but is making this challenge harder than it ever has been in the past when we've tried it now what appears to have happened is it looks like peter pan's flight did uh, go down very, very briefly and come back up in my lightning lane time before it even like really started, which means my lightning lane did not turn into an experience redemption. So I'm now back to do my Peter Pan's flight lightning lane. So I'm using my lightning lane for Peter Pan's flight now while I continue to try to modify. We can book our next lightning lane at 1.53 p.m. if we don't get a modification that helps that at all. So uh, we're gonna go try to knock this out and then hopefully be able to modify a little earlier. I tapped into Peter Pan's flight. Now remember, because this one was a two hour cooldown one, I do not get to immediately book another because I did the two hour cooldown instead. Lucky yellow pirate ship. I saw 140 uh, Big Thunder Mountain pop up and I was too chicken to grab it because I'm nervous that if I like yeah. wait till 140 to be able to rebook Haunted Mansion, we might have like a situation where 
uh, Haunted Mansion is gone. I don't know that that's true, but I'm nervous about it. It's already out to like eight. It probably would have been fine because the park's open till 10, but I just didn't want to risk it. So I didn't, and I think maybe that was a mistake, but we'll see. It's really bright, but my sunglasses are on. Um, at this point, two things I'm keeping an eye on is that I absolutely need to get the Festival of Fantasy Lightning Lane for the three o'clock parade. That's at 2.30 is when that Lightning Lane is um, four. And I have to make sure I get this, that one. So I'm keeping an eye on that one to make sure it doesn't sell out or anything like that. It's not a super popular one. There's plenty of great places to see the parade outside of the designated viewing area. But I'm probably gonna grab that one as we get close to it just in case, because if I miss it, I miss it and I fail. Um, for the Haunted Mansion, I'm making sure that it doesn't start looking like it's gonna disappear for the whole night. Because once things are gone, I'm worried they will stay gone because people won't be willing to modify out of them. So, keep an eye on Haunted Mansion, keep an eye on Festival of Fantasy, hoping that we can modify to knock down our cool down even more. Frustrating times here in Fantasyland. I saw a 1.30 um, Big Thunder, and then I saw a 110 Haunted Mansion, despite the fact that Haunted Mansion is out past eight at this point, and I wasn't fast enough. So another thing with the modification is you have to be way faster than you used to be. I'm pretty fast. Like, I press those buttons quick, and I miss them. So if you're just not timed exactly right, you can miss those good times. Ah, gonna keep trying. Now we're cooking with gas. I finally, finally, finally got an Ariel's Grotto for 120, um, which is one that is pretty far out. The character meet and greets lightning lanes, there are fewer available. So even though they're not as popular, they do fill up quickly. So if you want to do one of those with a lightning lane, highly recommend moving quickly because um, those lines can be long. So Ariel's Grotto, I got one for 120, which shaves a full 30 minutes off of our two hour cool down which is amazing. Um, I might keep trying, you never know, I might get that Haunted Mansion earlier, um, but that's in just 15 minutes that I can scan into Ariel, so, oh, that's much better. I am strolling over toward Ariel's Grotto. Um, I don't think I'm gonna eat a full meal now, which is what I was planning, because I had 50 full minutes. I didn't improve, but I am gonna maybe get a little snack, a little treat, just for me, because I am hungry. I haven't had anything since breakfast at home, except coffee. So this does put us in a bit of a precarious spot because if I book Haunted Mansion immediately after I ride or meet Ariel, then my two hour cooldown will go past the Festival of Fantasy Lightning Lane. Ugh, that's bad because then I can't get Festival of Fantasy, which wouldn't be all 24. But with the waiting, there's a chance that Haunted Mansion will go away for the night. Ooh. That's dicey. I'm almost tempted to modify it back to Haunted Mansion just for that reason alone, right? I mean, 120 is so good, but I just can't wait till 320 for another lightning lane. If I book Haunted Mansion, I can't get rid of it because I have to get Festival of Fantasy. This is dicey, 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 dicey. Modified it back to Haunted Mansion because I just can't, it, it went to nine, it went to 8.55 and the park's only open till 10 tonight. So there's no way that after another two hour cool down, I mean, there's a way, but it's not likely that after another two hour cool down, Haunted Mansion is still gonna be available. So I'm just gonna have to take my loss on this two hour cool down, which I've already done most of. Eat a lunch and get grooving. Oh wait, you know what? You know what I can go do? I can go ride Tron because my individual lightning lane's coming up, but I can also eat a lunch. All right, I'm popping into Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe for, I think, some chicken tenders in my 30 minutes I still have here. Oh, this stings. Stings, stings, stings. Okay, my order is taking a very long time. We're coming up on my Tron lightning lane, so I think we're gonna have to eat on the go just because I wanna try to be on and off Tron by the time I can book a new lightning lane because that way I can go maybe squeeze in one more lightning lane before I have to do the parade one. That might be a little too much, so what might happen is we might do Tron to just immediately book the parade to make sure we have it. Um, oftentimes with the show lightning lanes, the lightning lanes close 15 minutes prior to when they become available. So that's what I'm guessing is gonna happen with the parade as well. I'm just gonna play it safe probably, unless things go really well here, which as of right now, they're not. Chicken dinner's acquired. It's two minutes until I can ride Tron Light Cycle Run. So chicken dinner's on the go, it is. You guys think my stomach's gonna hurt after eating three and a half chicken tenders and a bunch of fries in under 10 minutes and then immediately riding Tron? Place your bets now. 
Tron Light Cycle Run is Magic Kingdom's newest attraction. It's actually all of Disney World's newest attraction. It is a Tron themed roller coaster with a very, very fast launch. It is both indoors and outdoors. It's pretty, pretty fun. Some complaints about it are that it's too short, but I think it's super fun. The big cool thing about it is that it does have these light cycles that when you sit on, it's kind of like sitting in a seated, leaned forward motorcycle position. It's uncomfortable, but it makes the ride more thrilling and it's definitely a more cool uh, ride vehicle than most. The only ways that you can ride this attraction are with the virtual queue or the lightning lane. So you either have to pay $20 as it was today or whatever the date based price is, or you have to make sure they're up at 7 a.m. to try to get that virtual queue with another chance at 1 p.m. The Lightning Lane for Tron is an entirely separate uh, side of the queue. You still see the same pre-show. You just go through a shorter version of the queue, so you pass a lot of people. So the Lightning Lane takes you right to the Tron lockers, um, which you do have to stow anything larger than a cell phone in a locker. It's complimentary, works with your park ticket, so it's pretty easy to use. And if you don't have a park ticket, you can get a uh, locker card, so it's very easy. If you pay for Lightning Lane, you do still end up in this like final stretch of queue for the loading, uh, but you walk pretty much right up to the lockers where most of the wait happens before that. I would say that typically with a virtual queue, I end up waiting up 50 minutes to an hour. And I think for the Lightning Lane, you're probably gonna see yourself waiting 10 minutes to 20 minutes. Also, it was definitely the right call to switch back to Haunted Mansion earlier. Haunted Mansion's gone for the day. So that was the right call, thank goodness. I still, I'm stressed, but it was the right call at least. So I just booked my next lightning lane because my two hour cooldown finally ended right before I get on Tron. And I got Dumbo because I'm being dicey and then I'm gonna try to get Festival Beta Sam immediately after. Initiate in three, two, one. The reason I picked Dumbo is because there is a secret, secret back path, secret back path uh, that we can take from Toronto Dumbo so we can be there really quickly so we can scan into Dumbo and get the Festival of Fantasy Lightning Lane. If you turn right next to Electrobytes, you'll end up over here in Storybook Circus. Dumbo the Flying Elephant is one of the most iconic rides in Disney World. You fly on the back of Dumbo. Very family friendly attraction, uh, very fun and relaxing. This one's just a must do just on nostalgia alone, I think, for most. And also, even if you haven't been to Disney before, it's so iconic, you kind of have to do it. So, I am scanned in. There's sometimes a second scan here, so we'll see. But I'm gonna try to get the parade. All right, sounds like there is uh, lightning in the area, which means we are in line for Dumbo. There is lightning and they are taking us out of the queue. So this is interesting because I've already scanned my lightning lane in. Uh, so what I'm going to do here actually is I'm going to go talk to guest experience to see if I can get, you know, another lightning lane for this a little later uh, when the weather's a little better. I did not get to ride the ride, so it definitely doesn't count for this challenge. Now what that also probably means is that the parade might not run. So just a lot of question marks here. So basically if anything like this happens, you get evacuated from a queue after scanning your lightning lane or anything like that. That Peter Pan thing had happened this morning and there had been the issue of like, they told us it was closing and it didn't close. So I left and did something else, but didn't come back in time for my lightning lane. I didn't get my, you know, if something wonky happens when you're paying for Genie Plus, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to find your nearest guest experience tent, which uh, there's one right here, but it's closed right now. So I'm gonna go find one on Main Street, hopefully. Always be polite and always be nice. Uh, they will absolutely do what they can to help you. If they cannot help you, Please do not get upset with them. They are doing everything they can. I promise, they just want you to have a good vacation too. Another fun game we're playing is, uh, we're, it's now about to start really pouring, I can tell. It's already raining a bit, and my rain gear's at the front because it came on so fast, which of course will happen if you do my rain gear in the locker trick. So for most lightning lanes, you get an hour long window to return uh, with a 15 minute grace period on the end. Uh, that is not always true. That is not true for the parade windows. Those windows are just 45 minutes because uh, otherwise you'll miss the parade. So we are going to go try to get rain gear before heading to that lightning lane. All right, it's pouring, but you can see that right there is where the lightning lane viewing typically is for Festival of Fantasy. It is gone. They have packed it up. They 
said weather, we're out of here. So I'm gonna go get my uh, raincoat and try to keep my phone out of the rain. And then we'll keep moving and grooving, hopefully able to get a new lightning lane since that Festival of Fantasy one is void. Okay, as of right now, they're still saying Festival of Fantasy is gonna run in the app. I don't know that that's true. It's totally packed up, I'm soaking wet. But made it to the locker in my rain gear, so that's good. Um, but that means I can't book another. So I don't know whether to cancel it because if they're not gonna run Festival of Fantasy, I could go ahead and book another. But if I cancel it, when I was gonna get an experience redemption, or if I cancel it and Festival of Fantasy runs, things could be bad. So I'm not really sure what to do. Okay, I did get the experience redemption update for the Festival of Fantasy Parade, which I can use on anything that isn't a coaster or a character meet and greet, pretty much. Uh, the list is right here. I am probably gonna end up using that on either Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Peter Pan, not Peter Pan, so I did that already, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Pirates of the Caribbean or Winnie the Pooh because those are the ones that their times were a little later. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up using those on. So I think Big Thunder was available, even though it's a coaster. Yeah, so we're good. Um, on one of those, this is actually good news. We don't have to do the parade now, uh, which is a bummer because I wanted to see the parade. I still need to go ask about the Dumbo thing. I'm gonna book my next lightning lane. I'm probably gonna book something far out because we're gonna have that two hour cool down situation again. Really great news, I booked Ariel for 6.50 and I was like, oh, this sucks, I'm never gonna get anything earlier. One popped up for 10 minutes from now. So I'm gonna go talk to guest experience and then go be Ariel and then be able to book another, which means I'm gonna get wet again. But I have a rain jacket now, so yay. Okay, so I was able to get an experience redemption for Dumbo. Um, I realized that we technically don't get to count the parade because even though I got the lightning lane and would have made it there, the weather canceled the parade for the rest of the day. So, big bummer. Pro tip in general, rain happens in the summer uh, and fall in Florida. Well, spring, summer, fall. Rainy season runs about half the year in Florida. And the rain usually happens in the afternoon. And that's when that kind of stuff is gonna get canceled. Rides are gonna close. So outdoor attractions, the parade, it's better to do them early if they're really, really a must do. So we won't get to count our parade. So our new target is 23 lightning lanes. And maybe we get like a .02 point for getting the lightning lane for the parade and being there in time. But, you know, 23 lightning lanes. All right, made it to Ariel's Grotto. This is where you can meet and greet with Ariel. It is a um, a very fun meet and greet. This is, was my favorite when I was a little kid and um, to older kid and teen. It's a 65 minute wait, so this is a great lightning lane pool because it's a very popular meet and greet. I couldn't get my phone out of my rain jacket pocket, but we talked about how apparently Flounder, it's his turn this year to be the shark in the annual shark drill in Atlantica. And he's, he's very, very taking very seriously. And Ariel told me that if we see Flounder, to act like he's very scary, maybe cry a little, that's what she said. So, you know, do that with me if we run into Flounder. Now I don't know where I'm going. Oh, I booked Space Mountain and it was showing me seven and when I tapped on it, it was 5.05, which is great, but we're gonna try to move it up because that is another two hour cool down. And I'd love to avoid those at this point. We've got our experience redemption for Dumbo. So I'll be able to ride that when it's available. And then I've got another experience redemption from Festival of Fantasy, which I will not be able to do, but I can do something else in its place, like Big Thunder when it opens, Winnie the Pooh, whatever's giving me trouble later, that's what that experience redemption is for. All right, so I'm actually headed up here uh, to do some mobile charging because there's actually a mobile charging station with USB ports back here in Storybook Circus. You want to go buy Pizza Lee Sideshow and under the little awning. Okay, I got my charge, phone charge a little chip and dealer here. And um, the outdoor rides are back open. The rain has stopped. I am going to go do my experience redemption at Dumbo and then pick a ride that I think is a good call to use my experience redemption on uh, Seven North Mine Train. Then it will be time for our Space Mountain Lightning Lane. And hopefully that will put us in the territory where we no longer have to worry about waiting super long for any lightning lanes because we've done all the ones that are further out. And we get to just kind of through the last ones. Yeah, that's a technical term. That's Tuesday to flying elephant. Rain can't stop us. It can just make our hair look bad. But who cares about that? We're in Disney World. I need to get my other power bank again. I keep swapping them. I need to get my other one. Um, and what the, look at this bubble just like in the air like that. Can you guys see that? Quinn, pay attention. Why are we rambling right now? Like you need to be looking the lightning lane. Focus. So this will happen with rain. It's a 105 minute standby wait at a Seven Doors Mine Train because it was closed during the rain. The lightning lane is also backed up. No biggie though. We're going to hop in it anyway. Uh, we got time to kill right now. 
All right, I'm in the lightning lane at Seven Dwarves Mine Train. This attraction is a very, very popular one. It is a Snow White themed roller coaster slash dark ride where you get to see the dwarves working in the mine and Snow White dancing with the dwarves in their cottage. But you also ride a fun roller coaster with swinging cars. It is a blast um, and I absolutely love it, but I don't typically think it's worth the wait. So lightning lane is a great way to go. Uh, it's $11 per person, which is one of the cheaper individual lightning lanes. Or I'll just ride this very, very last thing at night when the wait usually gets down to about 25 minutes instead of 105. <laughs> Okay, here's the deal. I'm off Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. It was a blast. Um, I just heard an announcement that there's another severe weather front approaching Magic Kingdom. And that when it gets close, it's within five miles if there's lightning, they will close the outdoor attractions again. For that reason, I'm gonna book it over to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad because I think that with it closing twice for rain, that lightning lane is gonna spike up in demand. So that's what I'm gonna use my experience redemption on instead of Winnie the Pooh. Maybe running across the entire park eight times during your day is not really in the cards for your family. So uh, let us know if you would like to see us do an experiment where we see how much you can get done just going in and, and not crisscrossing at all, just following the park as it's laid out. Uh, we could definitely try that out. We could do a versus challenge where one person is going as it's laid out and the other person's crisscrossing to see how much more you get done. We can just have a perfect day walking through. So let me know if you want to see that in the comments. We can certainly make it happen. All right, I made it to Frontierland. As fast as my little legs could carry me. Not really, because I can't find a Disney World, so I just walked quickly. Uh, we're getting in the lightning lane. Uh, this is like a mountain that has been cursed and some natural disasters abound. You go through an old ghost town and there are goats. The theme is very, very cool, but what's so fun about this ride is just how fun of a roller coaster it is. So if you like roller coasters, you should be riding Big Thunder Mountain. So but to get into lightning lanes, you use your park admission. So whether that's a car that you get, uh, like this, I actually have one from when I went to Guest Experience. Could be like this. Uh, could be a magic band. It could be Magic Mobile on your phone. And I have Magic Mobile on my phone, which is typically how I uh, scan into the park if I don't have my magic band on. Uh, so I just scanned my phone just like you would for like Apple Pay at each of these little um, Mickey heads at the end of the attractions and I get to get in. My water has been really empty for a while so the goal is to get it refilled when we go over to Tomorrowland because Tron has a new water bottle filler that works really well. So that's the goal. Remind me. Because I'll forget. Heading to Space Mountain, and then gonna fill my water bottle, and then hopefully get, I'm thinking probably the Cinderella meet and greet. I'm pretty sure the Cinderella meet and greet will be open until park close. <laughs> Mickey probably won't. So the meet and greets are my next kind of like nervy thing. Well, I've got a quick second of downtime. It's 4.50, my lightning lane is at 5.05. I can book a new lightning lane. My two hour cooldown ends at 503, and I'm thinking I should get a Mickey bar. Mickey bar acquired. Mmm. So good. Okay, right, remember we can scan in five minutes early. It's 459, so I can scan in in a minute, and there's a little bit of line for the lightning lane. So I'm gonna wait in it. All right, scan into the first one at Space Mountain. Uh, usually there's a second scanner. One thing I learned recently is that uh, the Lightning Lane has its own dedicated side of this ride, a different roller coaster track. Uh, it has a different coaster track compared to the one the Standard Queue gets. And I found the Standard track to be way more fun. Um, so maybe Rope Drop Space Mountain or ride it very last instead of using Lightning Lane on it. Uh, just because I think that the right side, which is the Lightning Lane side, is a lot ricketier. I feel like I had a chiropractic realignment. Uh, I, I know that you may think of me as young and spry. Many do. Maybe you don't think of me as spry. But I am too old for that. <laughs> Rough situation we're in. I This is what I was afraid of. So I've booked Enchanted Chills with Belle because that is one of the character experiences that I was kind of forgetting about. 
Uh, that one is already gone. There's no more available lightning lanes, but I did get it. It's just for 820, which is another two hour cool down. There's only four and a half hours left in the park day. And I've got a lot of lightning lanes to get. Granted, they are the easy ones to get, but uh, I'm just not sure if I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna try though. I'm gonna try my darndest. And I'm gonna spend the next two hours trying to modify my, or an hour and a half now, but I'm gonna spend my next whole time trying to modify my Enchanted Tales with Belt Lightning Lane earlier. Cause then I'm gonna start getting nervous about meeting Cinderella. On the bright side, point in this water bottle's fever, my ice from Casey's Corner this morning, I went and got water in there, still there, not melted. It's pouring again. But I think I've done all the outdoor stuff. Well, not Barnstormer or Speedway. As long as it doesn't pour the rest of the night, we should be okay. Okay, update, it's pouring rain again. I was able to get my uh, Enchanted Tales lightning lane to seven, which doesn't super help us. It gains us a couple of minutes on that two hour cool down. But I'm starting to get really nervous about getting uh, that neat Cinderella lightning lane because that one is already showing 8.20 for me. I still have a little under an hour I can book another if I don't get a better time. And it closed at nine. And the A20 was the last lightning lane for Enchanted Tales, I think. So, nervous. Very bad news. It happened. Meet Cinderella is now no longer showing as available. Now, on the bright side, Meet Cinderella is like a mid-level demand lightning lane. So it's possible that it comes back I have seen Enchanted Tales pop back up a couple of times. The problem is I still have like an hour until I can even get it. So I can't give up Enchanted Tales because Enchanted Tales went away first. If we're gonna lose Cinderella, we're just gonna start hunting the other ones playing for 22, which is a respectable number. Now what's super interesting is that Fry Bucket and I actually attempted a challenge where we weren't limited to park, but we just tried to get as many lightning lanes as we could in one day. Uh, we started in Epcot, we ended in Magic Kingdom, and we got 24 lightning lanes with Genie Plus in one day. The catch? That was before this changed the modification feature. With this change, it gets a lot harder to sort of like outdo other people. It puts everybody on a more level playing field, which to be honest is uh, a good thing um, because most of the time you don't need to get 24 lightning lanes in one day. Um, it's cool that we were able to do that. It's cool that I'm gonna be able to get a lot today, but the way to use Genie Plus isn't really competitively it's use it to suit your needs. So make sure you're prioritizing the right stuff so you don't miss it. Uh, but don't be afraid of those two hour cooldowns. Use it for the stuff that you really need to use it for. And don't use it for other stuff. There are lots of waits right now that are 20 minutes, you know, for stuff that I'm using Lightning Lane for. So you certainly don't need it on everything, especially if you play your cards right. Uh, and you can watch any of those Perfect Day in Magic Kingdom videos to see a really great airtight Magic Kingdom strategy that doesn't require getting every single lightning lane and stressing yourself out over when the characters close. Well, while I stress about whether I'm gonna be able to see Belle and meet Cinderella and the visiting princess, I came to Columbia Harbor House for dinner. I ordered a kid's meal, kid's fried shrimp meal, um, because I'm not super hungry and maybe I wanna have a treat later, we'll see. Uh, so, kid's fried shrimp meal it is. Uh, while I try to modify this lightning lane some more, Four fried shrimp, green beans, rice. I got an order of hush puppies too because the hush puppies here are so good. And a little Coke. This is perfect for me. If you're not a big eater, consider just getting a kid's meal. I think it works great. I don't always need a big lunch. All right, I'm on the move. Was not able to modify in Tan Tails with Belle, but it's coming up, so I'm heading over there. Uh, <laughs> Cinderella, I saw it pop back a few times, but it is gone, so I'm really nervous about that one. Winnie the Pooh, the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh is now past nine. That one is gonna go until, you know, 9.50, probably 9.40, 9.40, 45-ish, because Winnie the Pooh, unlike the Princess Meet and Greets, is open until park closed at 10 tonight. But, ah! So not only has the modification changes posed a big challenge to this that we haven't uh, dealt with before, doing one of these full Genie Plus challenges like this, but also the park closes at 10 instead of 11, uh, which it often closes at 11. So lots of, lots of challenges here. Lots of things to worry about. I am stressed <laughs> because Winnie the Pooh keeps popping up with like seven o'clocks, but I can't book them yet. 
I'm just waiting outside of Enchanted Tales for when I can scan in. Five minutes early at 6.55, but I can't. I'm like seeing seven o'clock Winnie the Poohs when it's like, it was gone for a second. I am so stressed. And Cinderella's gone, so. I think I'm still gonna go for the ones that I can, like that I can, that I might get rid of instead of just going for numbers on the easy ones. Cause I just think that's more valuable info for you guys. Like of what is actually more interesting to see is how many of the good lightning lanes I got instead of these ones that are a little bit easier. So I'm gonna keep trying to go for some of the hardest ones. Um, and we'll just see where I get to. And maybe I complete them. Qu Quincy, you're not gonna make it. Let's, let's speed it up. Also, how did I get in this bubble? Spirits are lifted because that show is so cute. It's um, an interactive show where kids get to go up and play parts in the story of Beauty and the Beast, and Bella's there, and it's adorable every single time. I couldn't stop smiling like a cougar. Uh, but I still haven't been able to get, I got an 820 Winnie the Pooh, which is better than the 9, like 20 that I had started with, but still not great, still not looking good for our, for our challenge here. I'm gonna keep trying, persevere. We have hope. My current working theory is they stop offering the character meet and greet lightning lanes at seven. I think you can get them for past seven, but I don't think you can book new ones past seven. That's my current working theory because Mickey went from being very available, like all day he was within within two hours to suddenly having none. I like current working theory. I now want to test that out some more, but that's what I'm thinking. The other thing that I'm not seeing anymore, which seems wonky, and like maybe they also stop offering them at seven, is Mickey's Filler Magic. That was one that you could get immediately all day and all of a sudden gone. I don't think we're gonna be able to do the lightning lanes for Meet Cinderella and a Visiting Princess, Meet Tiana and a Visiting Princess, Meet Mickey Mouse, or for Mickey's yeah. Filler Magic, which is a bummer. But other stuff still available. Winnie the Pooh has been gone, gone now for a minute. So I'm glad we got that one when we did. I'm glad we didn't give it up. Are you starting to catch on to what the secret is? because uh, it's a pretty good one. This poop closed. No, we're good. I'm off Winnie the Pooh. Now we're in a territory where everything's kind of even. Um, Tomorrow in Speedway is weirdly far out, but I'm like willing to chance that one. I feel like it's not going to disappear um, so I'm chancing it because I'm going to try to do things actually in sort of a, a spatial way instead of crisscrossing at this point so that now we can knock out as many as we can since everything's kind of on even footing. So I'm headed down to the sea journey of the Little Mermaid and then hopefully I'll grab that tea party right after that. At that point, uh, I'm, I kind of want to end in Tomorrowland because Tomorrowland has the most attractions. So I think that's a good place to end. Uh, most attractions left for me. So I think that would be a good place to end, which means I might pop over and do pirates. I also think like, I gotta get pirates, right? Can't skip pirates. Next stop, we have Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid, a newer dark ride that takes you through the story of the Little Mermaid, Ariel, and a very cool Ursula animatronic. All the classic music you love. So uh, here's a lightning lane, time to head in. Little Mermaid on route to Barnstormer because I was able to get one for Barnstormer. Then we're gonna do Mad Tea Party and then we have to go to Haunted Mansion, which I forgot about. We'll get carpets and pirates while we're over there and we'll come to Tomorrowland and see what we can do. See if we can do some damage. Barnstormer is a very short ride. It's actually the shortest in Disney, but this is a kid's coaster and it is super fun. When I was a little kid, I literally would ride this over and over and over again if it didn't have a weight. So it's a great introductory coaster for your kiddos and really fun for little ones. I like it as an adult too, it's just maybe not a must do. Mad tea. So wild how slow paced we were earlier. 
Now, the interesting thing is that all these ones that I'm doing now, they were all this slow. Like you could have got, I could have gotten on them immediately earlier with lightning lane, skip the line immediately. The problem was we were trying to get some of those cool ones and those cool ones are no longer available. So we couldn't play it any different today. Honestly, our challenge came with how the modifying uh, is a little bit harder now because everyone can modify. So I'm cool with that. I'm cool with seeing what we can reasonably do. And I'm feeling pretty good at this point. I think we got, I think we're gonna get a pretty high number here. Mad Tea Party is another one of those classic attractions. You ride in a teacup that spins and you can control the spinning faster or slower with this thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. I get some momentum going. So when you go the opposite way, it gets easier. Oh, I'm bad at this. I'm using my left hand, okay? I love tyrants also. That's where we're headed next. Maybe after Haunted Mansion. All right, we got across the park. It's actually pretty close to fireworks time, which means the faster way is gonna to be to take the long way all the way around uh, through Fantasyland and into Liberty Square. Uh, but that does it for Fantasyland attractions for us. We didn't get Fill Our Magic, we didn't get to meet the princesses. But otherwise, we skipped every single line in Fantasyland. Uh, let's go knock out the other lands too, shall we? All right, fireworks are about to start, which you can definitely tell because these lines are short. Peter Pan's flight's only 35 minutes. It's a small world, it's five minutes. Remember what I said earlier? Don't wait for it's a small world. Walk right on it around fireworks time. Even right after fireworks. If you are okay skipping the fireworks show, fireworks time is hands down the best time to see the shortest standby waits that you will see all day in Magic Kingdom. If you want to see the fireworks, but the park stays open after the fireworks end, and you're able to stay, you don't have kiddos that are too tired or anything like that, then I recommend staying because even after the fireworks, a lot of people head out and uh, there's a lot that you can get done after the fireworks. But don't worry, if you don't wanna stretch your day that long, that is totally fine. Uh, you can actually watch our video for a relaxing perfect day to see how we did a perfect day where we showed up late and left early from Magic Kingdom and still got a ton done. I remember when we got this lightning lane like a hundred years ago. <laughs> that feels like it wasn't even today, doesn't it? I mean, definitely, but I guess for you guys, it was probably only a couple of minutes ago. I wish you guys were here actually hanging out with me. We're still skipping a 20 minute wait here at Haunted Mansion, so that's pretty good. Haunted Mansion, as you can probably guess from how early we had to book it, is a spooky dark ride where you head into, as you guys say, a Haunted Mansion in Omni Move Vehicles that keep moving the whole time. And you hear from the ghost host, and he tells you about all the spectral denizens of the mansion, 999 happy haunts, but there's room for a thousand. <laughs> I'm the next ghost host, a lot of people don't know that. Thank you. So Pirates of the Caribbean is a boat ride that takes you back in time to the golden age of piracy. Um, and you can see a lot of like parts of the Caribbean characters in it uh, that have been added to the ride after the success of the movies, which were based originally on the ride and not the other way around. You see Jack Sparrow, you see Captain Barbosa. There's also original characters in this ride. It's really delightful. It's fun for the whole family. It could be a little scary for maybe super little kids because there's fire and it can get dark and loud. But other than that, pretty great for the whole family. All right, I was just able to grab that last 930 lightning lane for Magic Carpets of Aladdin. I don't think I got it on camera because I was so nervous that I wasn't gonna catch it in time. So, uh, that's gonna be our last lightning lane of the night. Honestly, I think we did a pretty darn good job today uh, considering the changes. The secret to using Genie Plus in Magic Kingdom is to respect the two hour cooldown, but don't avoid it. The two hour cooldown can be annoying for sure. However, you'll notice that I pretty much engaged it most of the day today. And that's because that's how you're gonna get on those good rides. If you're not trying to maximize Genie Plus, which you should not try to maximize Genie Plus because to have the best time, you don't need to, then the two hour cooldown is totally your friend. I use it constantly. I just book lightning lanes for the rides that I know I'm gonna need it on, which is that two hour cooldown. So don't be scared to book something a little further out. That is the secret. And then keep an eye and modify if you can. Not always gonna be easy as you saw today, but keep an eye and modify when you can. Now for true proof that you do not need to maximize Genie Plus to have a great day, you can check out any of those perfect days I've been mentioning. You can also see us ride every single thing in Magic Kingdom where we use Genie Plus to do it. And Fry Bucket Nemet even rode everything in Magic Kingdom without using Genie Plus. 
You can see any of those videos on the channel right now. They're all awesome and are gonna teach you a lot about Magic Kingdom strategy with and without Genie Plus. And as you can tell, that means that the way that I did today is probably not the way you wanna do. You don't wanna spend all your time staring at your phone. You're gonna be able to do a lot more by just using smart strategy and using Genie Plus as a tool rather than relying on it the whole day. It's officially closed. We're here all day. To put it in perspective, Frybuck and I got 24 last time we attempted this across Epcot and Magic Kingdom. So big change, really big change with that modification feature. Um, still, I think it's awesome because it makes it a lot easier for newbies to the system. It makes it a lot easier if you don't want to do all the research to be able to modify. Uh, it just makes it a little harder for the pros, but that's okay. That way everybody gets a piece of the pie, a piece of the lightning lane pie. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you'd like us to put Genie Plus to the test in the other perks, let me know in the comments. And now go watch Emma and Fry do every attraction in Magic Kingdom without Genie Plus. See you there.